In this module, we're going to discuss the Media Configuration Tool. This tool allows you to add genuine Canon medias or papers to the printer driver or printer's menu, as well as custom papers and third-party medias. So there are two main sections to this tool. The first one is to add a genuine paper that allows you to update or hide various Canon medias from the printer's menu and from the print driver. You can also add a third-party media, and this is a great component of this tool if you have a third-party media and you need to distribute it to various Canon printers within a fleet in the same family. So the first thing we're going to look at in this tool is how to add a genuine paper or to basically update the existing medias within the print driver and the printer menu. So you need to be connected to your printer. This tool only works if you are connected to the printer on the network or via USB. So the tool will go out and take a look and make sure you're connected and will communicate with the printer to find out what's loaded at this point. Now, you have a couple of options. You can scroll down on the right side and show all of the medias. You have the ability to change the hierarchy or the order of a particular media. Here I'm moving the plain paper up and down. You can also do a subdirectory by clicking on a paper category on the left and then that'll give you a limited number of papers that are available within that category. And similarly, you can hide or show a particular media. You don't really delete here because they want to make sure that you don't remove any, but you can hide them from the menu. And that's really helpful if you have a paper that you really never use and you decide you're not going to use at that moment, then you can hide that. You also have the option to rename the paper. So this can be helpful for organizing your papers for the ones that you use the most and the ones that you use uh, on a regular basis. You want to make sure they're the ones that are either at the top or also only available in the print driver. The other option is to add a custom third-party media. Now again, you want to make sure you're connected to your printer. And now you can see I have no papers at this moment that are custom papers. But a really helpful tool I want to point out is the help menu allows you to access uh, a really you know very useful um, help menu in terms of all the various different options because it can be a, a fairly overwhelming component to making sure you get things set up there's a lot of really helpful information within this help menu so if you do get stuck feel free to refer to that at any point okay so the first point first step in creating a custom paper is to click on the add button and that's going to begin the wizard for creating a um, a specific media. The first step is to determine do you want to base this on a existing media or would you like to use the assistant and build it from scratch? You have two ways of going about it. The assistant will allow you to fine-tune those settings to, to kind of override um, basing it on a media as I saw in the previous window or you can put in your own values if you know exactly what the thickness or weight is. In this case I'm going to select the Satin Photo 170 as my base and I'm going to copy that media setting if you will. I'm going to use the presets from that. And here you have the option to name how this individual media will be shown in the print driver and in the control panel. And it's recommended that you use the same name in both the print driver and the control panel. I think that option would make it more um, more logical as you're navigating through the menus. So in this case my satin photo has been selected and configured and it's saying to now go and load that media in the printer. Now I've done that and you can see that in the printer control panel I have my satin photo loaded and is available within the print paper menu. So we say OK to that. The next step is to select the paper source and under paper source we have manual feed or roll. We're going to select roll paper one. The next option is to do a paper feed adjustment. The paper feed adjustment will help to eliminate any banding for this printer in this particular paper type. So that's going to print. It's going to execute the paper feed adjustment, which you can see here. That's an internal image that's being sent by the software to the printer, and the printer will then measure that to determine the optimum paper feed for this paper. The next is to the determine your automatic cutting and your dry time. Normally you don't need dry time if you've set things up properly, but that can be done. You can also determine if you want borderless printing. 
This next section needs a little bit of extra explanation. Now we're trying to determine the optimum ink limit for a particular paper. Now, because we don't have a, an ink limit set for this paper, we have to print a test pattern that's going to give you a visual evaluation. Now, we want to start out with print priority set to image. Our print quality, we want to select the print quality, meaning the resolution that we most commonly use for this paper. If it's going to be standard, then use that. If you're going to use the highest setting, then you want to make sure you select that. And that's going to then print what's considered an ink limit test image, and there's going to be six of them. It's going to go in different levels from lowest to highest, and you're going to be able to visually evaluate those particular images so you can choose the amount of ink limit that is optimum for that paper. So we can start that printing. It's going to take a few minutes to create the individual patterns and print those on your printer. You want to give them a couple of minutes to dry, and then you want to visually evaluate those test patterns. Now here you can see an example of the ink limit test page and again it goes from lightest to darkest. In the area that I look at, the area that I find the most useful are the colored squares on the right. And if you see bleeding, you will see that ink is starting to transition into the neighboring color. And if you see that, then you know that you have too much ink. Now in this situation here, we can see we have a fairly light print. There is no bleeding between the magenta square and the green square, or from the blue square to the red square. But alternatively here, you can see that the cyan is starting to bleed a little bit and over ink, if you will, between the magenta and the cyan, and as well between the blue and the red, we have a little bit of over inking. So we wouldn't want to choose this as the optimum setting. We want to go back until we see no over inking. And once we have selected that as the optimum level of ink limit, we make the selection here, the one that be is you know, the best selection, if you will. So medium high was the one that was optimum for this particular media, and it's going to be different for every media. The next is to set your head height. Now, if you see any uh, scuffing on the, on the media that you've created, then you're going to want to make sure that you increase that head height. And generally, the vacuum strength of auto will be fine for most situations, but that can be changed if needed. So here's a summary of your paper settings for this custom paper and if you're happy with that you can click next and it's going to just confirm that you're going to this particular printer at this IP address and it's going to send that information to the printer. Okay, so that's going to take a minute and it's going to send that information to the print driver as well as it's going to send that information to the printer's control panel. And here you have the option, if you have an onboard spectrophotometer, to create a calibration target. Now a calibration target is very useful if you want to recalibrate the media, which is an excellent option, or if you want to distribute this file, this OM1 file, which is the media configuration file, to another printer in the same family that has onboard calibration. If it has the onboard calibration, you can then distribute this to that printer, which can then recalibrate on its particular machine and update it for that printer. It's a great option. So we're going to just do the paper feed adjustment once more because we're starting a new process. It wants to confirm that that paper feed is perfect. So the paper feed is done and now it's going to send the calibration target to the printer. Now the calibration target again needs to have the onboard spectrophotometer. That's an option for the IPF 6450. And here you can see an example of that. It's going through and measuring and creating a baseline. Basically, it's measuring each of the individual squares, individual colors, and it's going to reference those as individual LAB values that can be later used for recalibration of the printer. So it's creating a baseline. The calibration target has been created successfully and registered to the printer. So that is now completed. You have almost completed the, the process. If you just click Next, you will be taken into the completion and again a summary to make sure that you're connected to the right printer and it's going to send that information to the printer just to update it one last time so everything has been updated on the print driver and the printer itself the next option is you can export this individual third-party media and you could distribute it to as I say to other printers within the family so you could select that you can put it on a specific destination and you can say that that media file has been saved successfully. 
Now you could go, theoretically, you could go to another printer on the network that's in the X400 family, and you could import this media. Say you went to a 8400, an IPF 8400, you could now go there and load this individual media file. Now it's going to find it automatically because it is in the same place, but if it wasn't, you would browse to the folder where that is located, and it would then show up in this list. So you're not opening the file, you're browsing to the folder where it is, and it'll then look for any files within that folder. I happen to have it on the desktop. I'm going to cancel that because I've already imported that. And that is the whole process of creating a custom media for the IPF series.